Pray openly, pray loud, amen. This is a unity prayer moment. All of us need prayer. Let's begin praying. Let's, let's let those prayers go up to God. Our heavenly and gracious Father, you are so marvelous. You're so wonderful. You, you're the love of our souls. You're so patient with us. You strengthen us when we're weak. You take us in when we're homeless. Thank you. Pray this morning that you would touch now. Since you know everything, and you know every heart. I pray you will touch, Lord. That souls will be saved this morning. Guilty conscience will be relieved. The weak will be made strong. Pray this morning that you will let your Lordship rule in this place against all evil forces, evil influences. You are the Lord in this place. Rule this morning over all of the wiles of the devil, over all of his deception. You are God. You are God. And beside you, there are no other God. You are so marvelous, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. You gave him so we could be saved from our sin. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost who teaches us and empowers us to live in a way that you're pleased with our lives. We praise you now. Now bless all of us this morning according to your knowledge of our needs. In Jesus' name, we're going to shout. We're going to praise your name. We're going to shout hallelujah when you bless us, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give him some praises. And tell him thank you. He is so marvelous. I say he's so marvelous. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews. And I have chosen to read verse chapter 10, verse 21 through 25. Listen to what the Lord has to say to you. Listen to it. And having an high priest mm -hmm. over the house of God, the church, mm -hmm. let us draw near with a true heart mm -hmm. in full assurance of faith, yes. having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, mm -hmm. and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promise. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of, of ourselves together, well. as the man of some is, but exhorting one another, mm -hmm. yes. and so much the more as you see the day approaching, the word of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. 
I've chosen this morning in the name of the Lord to talk to you about power over guilt. Over guilt. Power over guilt. There are many individuals that are weighed down because of something they've done in the past. And they are not as happy as they can be because of the weight of the guiltiness. That's weighing on their minds. They re really regret what they did. But they can't get rid of the guilt. When they see individuals that they have wronged, it rekindles again. And they get so burdened down that they just can't be happy. They say to themselves, possibly, how could I have done that? How could I have done that? But keep this in mind, if you're one of those persons, we all messed up at one time or another. <laughs> power over guilt. There's power over it. Guilt is caused when we do not agree with God about the sin we have done. When the Lord forgives you, let it go. Now, there are always consequences to sin. But when the Lord forgives you, let it go. You're not going to make it better by lying guilt to weigh you down. <laughs> Psalm 6 and 9, verse 5. Some have said, you know my folly, talking to God. You know my folly, oh God. My guilt is not hidden from you. God know about our guilt. Yeah, yeah. I say he knows about it. He knows about it God. And God wants us to be happy people. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Okay. I got somebody talking to me. Amen. Yes, because guilt can weigh you down. You feel so bad about it. Man, how could I have done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have known better. Yeah. Come on. But when the Lord is not in control, you really don't know no better. Amen. <laughs> I hear Jesus when he had the cross, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. <laughs> I hope if there's a person this morning that's been burned down with guilt I and mean, you've been have been lingering with you that you let it go this morning. That no matter what I've done in the past, I'm gonna be happy from now on, amen. Let it go. So in, in Philippians four and eight, God made it possible for us to replace guilt with proper thinking. He made it possible for us to replace guilt with proper thinking. Yeah. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brothers, yeah. whatsoever is true, yeah. whatsoever is noble, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, yeah. whatever is lovely, whatever. Good report. Whatsoever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. Think of these things. 
sir. Change your thinking. <laughs> yeah. I, I know in the past I was a rascal. <laughs> Did a lot of things I haven't told nobody, and I'm not going to tell them. I said it's somewhere, amen, the people thought well, if they want to course imagine, did you ever do this or did you ever do that? I said, well, I sin. <laughs> I'm not specifying nothing. Because <laughs> people, some people just wait on something. <laughs> and they'll take it and run with it. And tell it like you're still doing it, amen. <laughs> let, let me work on, amen. Guilt is no longer necessary. <laughs> it's not necessary. No, no, no. God has made it possible for all individuals to be relieved from their guilt. Let's look at Isaiah 1 and 8, 18. Isaiah 1, 18. Guilt is no longer necessary. Uh-huh. He said, come now. Yeah. Let us reason together, says the Lord. That's what he said. For your sins are like scarlet. They shall be as white as wool. That's right. Though they are red like crimson. They shall be, hallelujah, yeah. they shall be like wool. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah. No matter how bad I was in the past, it's over now. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you. And I don't care who bring up my past. All right, now. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah again. I, I don't care who bring my past up, it's over now. And I will not allow nobody to cause me to have a guilty trip again. Amen. Nobody. Amen. Nobody. I won't get no bags under my eyes. Worrying about what folks say. And there are many individuals today. It may be some in this morning. I don't know. But the Lord brought this to my mind, amen, because people are going around with guilt. That's right. And all of us have done wrong. Amen. But thank God for making it possible for our, sin, for our lives to be cleansed. For our lives to be cleansed. I'm glad he made it possible. And, 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 and he said, come now. Don't wait till tomorrow. Your thinking can be changed. Yeah. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Yes, sir. Be you transformed. Yeah. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> By the renewing of your mind. It's a mindset thing. It's a mindset thing. You, you have to change your thinking. Yeah. Change your thinking. Keep, keep in mind, if God said you're all right, he's forgiven you, yeah. and he has cleansed you, accept it. Believe it. Yeah. I believe God. Yes, sir. Titus 1 and 2 in the B section of that verse, he said, God cannot lie. Amen. God not like a man that he should lie. All right. mm-hmm. No, he's not going to. <laughs> the word tells us, that now is the time. Now is the time, Pastor. Come now. He- he- amen. These things are helping me. Amen. In uh, Michael 7, 18 and 19. Who is a God like you? Michael 7, 18 and 19. I believe that's what I said. Who is a God like you? I mean, he's praising them now. 
you who pardon sin yeah. and forgive the transgressions of the remnant of his inheritance. Yeah. You do not stay angry forever, yeah. but you delight to show mercy. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Listen to him. He said, you will again have compassion on us. You will thread our sins on the foot and hurdle all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. And one writer saying they won't rise up against you again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody help me say thank you, Lord. Psalms 103 and verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he. <laughs> so has he removed our transgression from us. As the east is from the west. Look, look at him. He has given us power, to, power over guilt. Yeah. Isaiah 43, 25. I, even I, am he who blots out our transgressions. Yeah. Yeah. For my own sake, and remember your sin no more. Yeah. Somebody ought to shout on that. No and remember your sin no more. Now, there are some folk that won't let it go. <laughs> but God Almighty said, I won't remember it no more. And no more is no more. Isaiah 43, 25. Did you get that? Remember your sin no more. Isaiah 38 and 17. Surely it was for my benefit. That I suffer such anguish. You have to go through some stuff sometime. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, but in your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. Yeah. Woo. Your love. In your love. You think about some of them pits you were headed for. You didn't know they were there. You didn't know they were there. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Surely it was for my benefit yeah. that I suffered such anguish. That's right, he said, in your love, you kept me from the pit of destruction. Yes. Yes. You have put all my sins behind your back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Woo. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has given me power over my guilt. I don't let my guilt weigh me down. I remember things I've done, but it don't, it don't pressure me down. I thank God for not letting me go to the pit. Pit for the unsaved is hell. <laughs> That's a pit you can't get out of. Ask, ask the rich man. He tried to make a, day, a, a deal in hell, but he couldn't get out of it. And Abraham said, I'm going to tell you now, there's a gulf between us. You can't come to us and we can't come to you. Because just maybe some folk on the other side with ladder would say, well, I feel sorry for him. But he said, we can't come. It's over. Hell is forever person never get in hell, he'll never get out of it. Won't we have mercy upon me, Lord? The book said mercy is against the judgment. Did you hear him? If you got some guilt this morning because of something you did, let it go. 
Let it go. Our God has made it possible for us to be cleansed from all sin. Cast it in the sea of forgetfulness. Never rise up against you again. Put it on his backside. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it on his backside, amen. And he said, you're so important to me, I have engraven you in the palm of my hand. I can't forget you. I look at my hands, I see you, amen. <laughs> God is an awesome God. You, you can give that another hand. I heard two hand claps, I believe. He has given us power over guilt. Look, look, I'm just picking these other verses, and I'm, I'm going to let you go where you're going. But there are too many people going around with guilt, and some people would hurt folk because of a guilty country. They get so bitter with themselves. And they'll take it out on other folk. Yeah. They're really mad with themselves. Angry with themselves. And they'll spew out on others. Because they got all this guilt in them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their, sun, their sunshine of days is dark as midnight. That's dark. Man. They walk around in that sunshine at the peak of the day, at the zinc of the sun, and it's still dark to them. But God. God wants us to be ready when the day comes. No matter what you have done, God has made it possible. In fact, he has forgiven you. You have to accept it. When God gave his son, his son gave his life, paid our sin debt at Calvary, arose from the grave with all power and heaven in his hands. Sin debt had been paid. Yeah. All one has to do now is accept what he has done for them. Amen. John 1 and 12. Mm -hmm. But as many as received him, ah, talk about yes. listen to him, yes. to them gave he power, power to become the sons or the children of God. Even to them that believe on his name. I, I, Romans 1 16. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed. I know they crucified him. But I'm not ashamed. I, I, I know he died at Calvary. I know they put him in the grave and the curtain went down. But that's not the end of the story. Three days later. The curtain comes up again. Guess who walks out of it, amen? Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel is good news. He cleaned up sinners. Give them a home to be with him for eternity. He did all of that. I'm glad about it. Are you glad about it? I'm not ashamed. I told you some time ago, power there in, in, in Romans 1 16 is dunamis. And dunamis means like dynamite. And dynamite blows up stuff, <laughs> uproots stuff. You got stuff to get up out of your place where you're going to have your fill, your God, put some dynamite on it. Like the stem and the dynamite. Will blow up the stuff. Yes, sir. You don't have to try to dig on it and pull it up. The dynamite will get it up. Amen. Yes, sir. When you trust the dunamis. When you trust the gospel. The dunamis. By faith in your life. Whatever been rooted in your life. Whatever stain is in your life. The dunamis. Amen. That's ignited by the power of the Holy Ghost because he quickens the word in your life and the word explodes in your life and stuff in you that don't need to be in you got to go then. Dudas me got me one Thursday. Fussing and cussing at Sister Well, but Dudas must got me. 
that Thursday night, amen. I went in early that night, amen, fussing and cussing. But before the next morning, I yield to dunamis. And it broke up my life. Took out the old stony heart and put a heart of flesh in there. And where I could treat her wrong and didn't bother me no matter how she cried. And now I have feeling. Because of the dunamis. The dunamis. Right, here, here it is. Let, let me just bring in a few. Here it is. Here's a woman who had an issue of blood. <laughs> but she heard about the dunamis. <laughs> she heard about the good news. That there was a man in town. And, and she said, if I can just touch... The hem of his garment. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey. I'll be made whole. I'll be made whole. Yeah. She put her faith in him and she was hemorrhaging, means she was bleeding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When she put her faith in the dunamis, the dunamis exploded in her life. Yes, sir. Close up the exit of the blood. Yes, sir. And she was healed. <laughs> her hemorrhaging stopped. And then, then the Lord said, Who touched me? He says, somebody touch me. The, the, the disciples said, well, Lord, all these folk around you, and you saying somebody touch me? He said, I said, somebody touch me. I didn't say anybody. <laughs> somebody touch me. Because I felt the virtue leave out of me, amen. That's the way it is when doing will start working. It brings you what you need from Jesus, Amen. I, I know he sits high and looks low, and, and the sun is 93 million miles away from here, but let me tell you, he's beyond that, yet he's right down here with us, amen. The dunamis. He give us power though over our guilt. I thank God for his gospel that he gave to me. And then, then here's another one, amen. At the cross, here's a known thug. Here's a known pusher. Here is a known murderer. Here is known a thief. Here is known a robber. Here is known an all-night rambler. Here is known a liar. But at the cross, I said at the cross, the dunamis. There was one on the left and one on the right. And there was one in the middle. Do, do you hear me? I got you, just hold me just a little bit, amen. I'm, I'm working on, amen. But, but the man in the, in the middle, yeah, yeah. the one in the middle, yes, the man on the right looked at the man in the middle yeah, yeah. And, and said to the man in the middle as he talked to the man on the left, yes, sir. he said, look at here, we deserve what we're getting. Yes, sir. But this man have done nothing wrong. And then he looked at, at he looked at Dunamis. Yes, he looked at the good news. Yes, and he said, Lord, Lord, when you come in your kingdom, yes, remember me. Yes, <laughs> and and the Dunamis said, Today you shall be with me yes, in paradise. Yes, do you hear me? Yes, sir. The Lord can. Uh -huh. The Lord can. Yes, sir. Bring about a change. Yes, will. Do you believe he can? Yes, sir. He says in Hebrew that he is the great high priest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say he is the great high priest. Yeah, yeah. We still have a priest yes, sir. over the church uh -huh. 
He said, then you can be encouraged. You don't have to have a guilty conscience. In verse 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. And faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Do I have a witness? Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. My conscience been clean. I have your conscience been cleansed? It's by the blood of Jesus. And our body is washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Without wavering. I don't care what nobody said about my past. I am not going to waver. I've been born again. I'm sanctified. I'm holy. I'm a child of the king. I've been made a brand new creature. Because Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I feel like preaching again. Amen. I am so glad that God gave me power over my guilty conscience. I know I did a lot of bad things, but oh, one Thursday, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest, and I found in him a resting place, and God knows he had made me glad. I can shout for joy. I once was dead. Oh, but now I'm alive. Yeah. I was outdoors, but now I'm in. I was stinking with sin, but now I'm clean. Yeah. I was on my way to hell, but now I'm going to be with the Lord. The Lord says, let us. Amen. Let us hold fast to the profession of our faith. Without wavering. I know they're, they're, they're all tangled up in Washington. But keep in mind, heaven is not tangled up. I know they don't seem to know whether they're going or coming. But this is still God's world. I don't care what they do. I, my faith is in God. I, I'm not going to waver. If they cut off Social Security, if they cut off Medicare, that's all right. I, I'm still being cared for. I, because I have a savior. His name is Jesus. He's my healer. He's my deliverer. He's my provider. And he supplies all of my needs. And that's why I said in verse 25. Uh, don't stop coming to church. For he said don't forsake your assembling of yourselves together. Don't say well I got enough. Keep on going to church, coming to church, man. Because the same Jesus, I said the same Jesus, the same Jesus uh, who relieved my guilty conscience, uh, the same Jesus, uh, the same Jesus uh, went to Calvary and died between two thieves, uh, buried him in Joseph's new tomb, uh, in his new tomb. But early, I said early. Sunday morning, uh, he got up out of the grave. Uh, he said, All oh, power, all oh, power, all oh, power, all oh, power. Hey, 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 all oh, power, all oh, power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.
Thank you, Lord. Yes, he did. Thank you, Lord. 